Section 6.2, solve by graphing. All right, so we're doing the exact same thing we've been doing. Uh, so far, we looked at factoring. Now we're going to look at, gra uh, sorry, looked at factoring, did quadratic formula. Now we're doing graphing. And if you're wondering why I saved this for last, uh, it's basically because I didn't want anybody to start doing the graphs, think, well, maybe I don't have to do quadratic formula. I can just put it in a calculator. Or maybe I don't have to factor. I can just put it in a calculator. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to put it in a calculator. We're getting some kind of fun uses. So maybe if I was launching my uh, Angry Bird here, and I want to make sure I did the exact right path, make sure he, uh, he flew the right way to uh, hit the mean little pig over here. You know, you have all played that probably, so make sure you do the exact right path. Or maybe if I'm standing on top of a really tall building and throwing a water balloon off of it, hopefully I'll uh, don't go out and do this at home. But then we could answer the question of uh, you know how long it would take to to fall or or how fast it'll be going when it when it hits the ground. Or if you ever uh, another thing, hopefully you'd never do <laughs> played air roulette. Then uh, if you shot your arrow straight up in the air, how long do you have? So you're in trouble. So a couple things we can do with it. The first thing I'm going to look at is just a couple graphs. And example one, we just look at a graph and we come up with a couple of solutions. Uh, again, I keep emphasizing this point, solutions, zeros, roots. They all mean the same thing. They're all x-intercepts. Okay, An x-intercept can be known also as a solution, a zero, or a root. You'll, you'll see all those terms used interchangeably. So in this case, just to get the idea, well, where does this parabola cross the x-axis? Well, it crosses at 1, crosses at 3, and, and that's it. That's the answer. That's as simple as that. If we look at the second example, well, let's see. It crosses at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Two solutions, we're done. That's it. Okay, that's all we're doing. Uh, where it gets more difficult is where it's not exactly crossing uh, at zero or one. It's you know, somewhere in between, but it's not a fraction either. It's an irrational number. That's where the challenge comes in. So let's try one of those. Uh, you will need your calculator. If you don't have it, hit pause and go grab one. But I'm going to type this in for y equals. And, well, never mind, I already did. That was quick. So, hit graph, take a look at it. And, well, looks like probably 0 and, and 4 again. Pretty similar to the one I just did. But you never want to assume. Um, you can get in a lot of trouble by assuming. So, here's the process. Second trace. And, by the way, I'll go through this and write it down in just a minute. But second traced. Second trace, sorry. 0. And there's another way I might show you, but we'll stick to this first. Um, let me back up. The reason I said zero, remember, zero, solution, root, all mean the same thing. If we're finding the solution, we're solving, that's the same thing as finding a zero or a root or an x-intercept. It's all the same thing. All right, so zero, it's going to ask me for a left bound. All right, well, imagine that you know, this is your... This is where it crosses the x-axis. If you're not sure if you're on the left, well, I'd say that x is to the left of this little line I'm drawing right now with my pen. Once you're convinced it's on the left, hit enter. It's going to say right bound. Well, again, if this is where it's crossing the x-axis, then to the right of where my pen's being you know, drawn an imaginary line right now, go over here. Okay, well, I'd say that's to the right. Um, enter again, and there you go. So it's an irrational number. It's negative uh, 0 0.236, two three decimal places. Three decimal places is always good. Um, two is pretty good. But if you're in doubt, I'd go with three on this. All right. Well, there is another one. We can see it right here. So second trace is 0 again. All right, this time the left bound would actually be on this side of the intercept. Okay, so right bound is going to be on this side. And this one occurs at 4.236.
And it kind of has to do with the quadratic formula, but these decimals will pretty much always be the same. So that's kind of a common phenomenon. There's my two answers. Okay. So let's recap those steps. Here's your calculator steps. And we'll do some other things with the calculator in just a moment. So I went to y equals. Of course, I put my graph in. All right. When I went to y equals, put my graph in. I hit graph to see it. So graph come that came next. All right. Well, I need to figure out exactly where it crosses. So second trace. So let's write that down. Second and trace at the you know, well in that sequence, not the same time, of course. And you want option number two, which is zero. Okay. And then I'm just gonna say choose the correct left and right bound. Well, that that can run into some difficulties, so let me give you a, another option. So we'll put a big or right here. Or here's another option you have. If you go back to that last example, the one we just did, pull it back up, hit graph. Well, another thing I can do is second trace and intersect, which is option five. So our big or here from second trace, do option five instead of two. Five is intersect. Okay, now if you choose that, all you have to do is put the X really close to where it's crossing. By the way, if you hit second and over, it'll go a lot faster. All right, notice it says first curve. That's important, because no matter how many times I hit enter, it's gonna get hung up on the second curve. What I need to do, if I do second trace intersect, the thing I just talked about, go back to y equals. You're gonna to have to give it a second line. It's trying to figure out where they're intersecting. If you only give it one line, that doesn't make much sense. That's like trying to figure out where to cross a street when there's no other street to cross. Um, you, you, intersection has to be where two things meet. What we're gonna to have to, we're, we're trying to figure out where it crosses the x-axis, okay? Well, the x-axis would be y equals zero. And hopefully you remember that in Algebra 1, and I can go over it more in class if we need to, but you're trying to figure out where your graph crosses the x-axis. So y2 is going to have to be zero in this case. All right, so second trace, intersect. Now get your x close to where it crosses. First curve, say all right. Second curve, say okay, enter. And then when it says guess, Enter one more time. So enter three times. All right, so we hit enter three times, and there we go, negative 2.36. Uh, to get the other one, second trace, intersect. Remember, second and over, it's going to go a lot faster. Get it pretty close, enter three times. Most people prefer this method. It's up to you. Uh, but again, most people prefer second trace, intersect over the first thing I told you with the zero, because you got to get that left bound and right bound correct, and, and most people have trouble with that. So another method. Um, either way, I don't care, maybe try both. All right, zooming in. We're going to get to that by the next example, because the next example doesn't fit. Let's, let's try to have a little bit of fun. We're, uh, we're going to launch a water balloon off a building. It's, uh, it's going to travel 150 feet per second. We've got a high-powered catapult up here. Uh, and the building's 30 feet in the air. Question is, how long is the balloon in the air? Okay. Well, the equation for that, I'm going to give it to you. I wouldn't expect you to come up with that. That's a physics problem. But uh, it's negative 32 t squared. Uh, it's going to be plus 30 t plus 150. And it's going to equal, oh, oh, I did it backwards. Let's cross that out and start over. Uh, 32, that's actually gravity. Um, 150 feet per second is the speed it's launched at, and 30 is the height. I actually had that backwards. Now, think about this. Why is it equal to zero? Well, I'm trying to figure out where it hits the ground, or this guy trying to catch it down here. All right, so if I'm trying to figure out where it hits the ground, we're going to call the ground zero. That hopefully makes some sense. Makes some sense. Height here be zero. 
height here would be 30 feet. Okay, so that's the idea. All right, now you can solve it with any method we've done. Uh, factory may work. Quadratic formula will definitely work. Quadratic formula always works. But if we try the calculator, which is probably what you're going to do anyway, then uh, not necessarily that you would do that, but that's because that's what I'm trying to show you here. All right, go to y equals negative 32. Now, you're going to see t used quite a bit in the homework probably. Um, t stands for time. Uh, the same button that you hit on the calculator, let me move it so you can see it, the same button I hit for, for, uh, for x on the calculator also has a t. Now that's for something you'll use in pre-calc and maybe physics, but not in this class. So we're just going to call it x. So hit that same button, we'll call it x. Make sure it's squared. That's uh, plus 150t, in this case we'll use x again, plus 30. And we have the other equation equal to zero, but the other side equals zero. So put it in uh, for y2. All right. So now let's hit graph. Remember, this is a 10 by 10 window. All right. Um, we're talking about how high the balloon went. And the x-axis is t or time, because that's what I use for x here. So this is how long the balloon's in the air. All right. Now, I can answer the problem here, how long it took to hit the ground. That's this point right here, that solution. But I kind of would like to see the whole thing, because later on I'm going to ask you how high the balloon go. And we're going to need to be able to find that on the calculator. So you're going to want to go to Window. All right, and I will write this down for you in just a moment. So watch it, uh, maybe give it a shot, and then I'll change it. I'll, I'll write it down on here for you. X is time in our case. Remember, we used X instead of T. Well, our time, we can't go backwards in time, so we might as well just call it zero for the beginning. Um, the X maximum, we, we know it fit on here. When we looked at the graph, I'll go back real quick. Um, see what that did? It stretched out. It starts at zero to 10 now for the X axis. Um, it's, it's hitting about right there in the middle, so I might even go seven seconds for maximum. So back to window. I'm going to go seven seconds for the maximum. Now, why in this case is my height? I uh, started 30 feet in the air, but the ground is the absolute lowest we'll ever be. And here's the thing, though. If you put zero, you want to know where the balloon hit the ground. The calculator is going to, um, going to see where it crossed the ground. So we actually need to have a little bit negative. I might leave that negative 10. Uh, if you don't quite understand, I think with a few more examples, uh, and maybe a couple calculator errors, you'll see why we should probably leave that at negative 10. We're not going to go underground with this balloon, but to do our calculation, we kind of need that negative. All right, and 10 for the height. Well, it started at 30 feet in the air, so I think 10 is going to pretty much be off the scale. Uh, just make a guess at how high you think it might go. I'm going to guess maybe 200 feet. It might go higher, it might not. We'll just see if it fits. Uh, hit graph, see if it fit on there. Eh, it kind of went off of that. All right, so you could play around with the window more and get it to fit nice, but really our question was, how long did it take to hit the ground? All right, well, started here, went up in the air, gravity took over, came back down, hit right there. All right, so wherever this crosses the x-axis, that's how long it took. So here's where you're, uh, here's how you apply what you've been doing, second trace. I'm going to go with intersect because that's the most popular method, and I'm going to move my x down the ground. You can watch it kind of pretend the balloon's falling here if you, as you go. All right, so it's pretty close. Enter three times. Tell it to guess, sure. 4.87, we'll call it, uh, let's call it 4.88 seconds. All right, so time was about 4.88 seconds. All right, now if you've really been paying attention, then you might be thinking, well, wait a minute. These all have two answers. And you're right, it does. Um, remember, only part of this, the parabola is a mathematical model to try to fit our situation. So, yeah, the part that exists in the real world is this path, but if we go back to window, let's pretend we could go backwards in time. Um, maybe not negative 10, let's go with negative 3. And we'll keep the other stuff the same. All right, well, let's hit graph, take a look at it now. Okay. Well, 
this is where I launched it. Theoretically, if it went backwards in time, this is the path the balloon would have taken, and if the balloon burned its way through the ground, this is theoretically where it would go. Again, theory. We're only concerned with where it hits the ground over here. But the theoretical place it hits the ground, well, second, trace, intersect. Let's back up. Watch the X come across there. All right. Enter three times. Uh, negative 0.19 seconds. Well, again, we, we can't go back in time. I'll write that down here. Uh, negative 0 0.19 seconds. If, we, if you figure that one out, you let me know. But we're going to go by the physical universe I know of, and we're going to say it's impossible. So it takes 4.88 seconds for this balloon to hit the ground. All right. So real quick recap. Let's put this paper right, put it back up again. Uh, talk about how I zoomed in. Okay, the way I did it here, when it didn't fit on my graph, then I went to window, which was on that top row. That top row is all your graphing buttons. Okay, and the standard window is 10 by 10. Here's what I'm trying to show you. It's negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10 on the X and the Y. That's your standard window. All right, you're going to have to change this thing to fit. So it's kind of a guessing game. The things you care about, the minimum X and the, uh, whoops, the maximum X, and the same thing for Y. Minimum Y, maximum Y. Those are the things you care about. Uh, the rest of it, don't touch it. Uh, you can mess the graph up a little bit. Not too bad, but don't touch it. So change your X maximum and minimum. Same thing for Y. Um, with these, your X minimum, X is going to work like time. You can't go back in time, so zero is a good place to start. X maximum. I don't think any of these are going to go over 10 seconds, so that's probably a good thing to keep for the max. Your Y minimum, well, it really just depends on how high you start off the ground, but you do want to keep it negative. We're going to go, uh, excuse me, go with negative 10 probably, so we can do a calculation. The object doesn't go underground, but to do our calculation, we need to assume that it, it did. All right, and the maximum, well, just make a good guess. How high do you think this balloon or whatever you're shooting in the air is going to go. All right, so those are some good guidelines, 0, 10, negative 10, and, and make a good guess for the height. If you're, It's kind of a good game to play while you're trying to figure it out. If you're close, well, it looks good, and if you're way off, then keep changing it. Hopefully that's enough to get you through the lesson. Go ahead and give the practice problems a shot, and good luck.